Very good morning and welcome for 68th AICOG TV interview. I am pleased to have with me one of my most favorite teacher, Dr. P K Shah sir. Sir, thank you very much for accepting our invite to be here. My pleasure. Sir is a professor and uh, a former professor and HOD from K M Hospital Mumbai. He has been a past uh, president of Foxy, M O G S A I A G S I F U M B and A F T T. So we are really fortunate to have your kind presence here. And sir is going to enlighten us on the topic of incompetent OS. Yeah. Sir, uh, let me begin with my first question: that how common is the incompetent OS? Uh, if you look at the literature, <laughs> it ranges anywhere from 0.1 percent to 1 percent of all the pregnancies. So it is not that common, if you really ask me. But when you look at second trimester abortions, 16 percent of second trimester abortions are because of Incompetent OS. So, what are those different risk factors for incompetent OS? Okay, now it is classified into two parts, and you can have congenital incompetent OS, whereby a mother is exposed to diethyl silvestrol. So that means, if mother is given diethyl silvestrol, if she is carrying a female child inside, when she grows, she is born and she grows, she will have incompetent OS because of this congenital problem. Then there are congenital anomalies of the uterus which can again lead to incompetent os but majority of the classification is secondary and that is following some operation on the cervix like amputation laceration of the cervix or if you have forceful dilatation of the cervix during mtp or if there is a operative vaginal delivery prolonged labor etc that can cause weakening of the internal os also it is found more common in multifetal pregnancies so and there are some people call as muscular cervix so the ratio between muscle and collagen is reversed in this patient and then the cervix is very soft and it cannot hold the content of the uterus that is a pregnancy till term as a result there is a premature dilatation of the cervix And either abortion or preterm delivery. Absolutely. So one has to be really very vigilant on the various Absolutely. risk factors for the um, uh, fi finding of the incompetent or. Yes. So yes. then uh, that takes us to the uh, next question of how do we diagnose this incompetent or? Because okay. earliest diagnosis would be critical in such cases. Right. Now it is very important that all the conditions one must keep three things in mind. Number one is the history of the patient. as i told you with the patient had in history of her mother having exposure in utero of diethyl silvestrol or if she is having herself the mother the congenital anomalies of the uterus or she is carrying multifetal pregnancy and you have to ask whether she had in past any preterm delivery or repeated painless second trimester abortions very important or she has undergone any surgery like amputation of the cervix conization of the cervix operative vaginal delivery all these will have to be kept in mind when you come to a diagnosis then we have diagnostic tools when patient is not pregnant one can pass hegar's dilator number 8 mm without any resistance at the level of the internal os patient does not get any pain and the doctor doesn't get any resistance and there is no snap when the dilator is taken out then we have radiology which comes very handy and we used to do cervical isthmography hsg which we used to call thereby you have funneling of the cervical canal nowadays we don't do it because we have now the most important thing in the form of ultrasonography which is the no most non invasive way of diagnosing this condition before ultrasound came we used to do only pv examination the internal examination to see whether the cervix allows introduction of the finger into the internal os or not that can happen only if the external os is patulous if the external os is not open you can't put your finger inside you can't assess whether the internal os is open or not so the only way you can assess whether the internal os has opened up or not and that the cervix is shortened or not is by ultrasonography PV examination gives you only the lower part of the cervix can be palpated by the examining finger so you don't get the assessment of the full length of the cervix if the external loss is closed so here ultrasonography scores over the clinical examination and transvaginal sonography is the best way you can assess a cervix during pregnancy 
So if a cervix is less than 2.5 centimeters, that is 25 millimeters during pregnancy, and especially between 18 to 22 weeks, patient has almost 37% chance of going into preterm delivery or second trimester abortion. But if the cervix is very short, less than 1.5 centimeters, that is 15 millimeter, then almost 75% of these patients will have either spontaneous abortion in second trimester or preterm delivery later on. So that is very important and this can be done with transvaginal sonography very easily. Absolutely. So, the transvaginal sonography has really uh, made our standard. life gold Absolutely standard. Absolutely a gold please. standard for diagnosis of incompetent OS. So, once diagnosed, uh, how much is its risk to uh, uh, for the preterm labor? That every incompetent OS lands up in the preterm labor or it doesn't happen in the practice? So, that is why we label these patients at either high risk, mm -hmm. whereby she has history of abortions, second trimester okay. abortions in past or preterm deliveries. Or she doesn't have any high risk. Mm -hmm. So low risk patients, even if they have a short cervix, only 25% of them have preterm deliveries okay. later on. Whereas if she is a high risk patient and if she has incompetent OS diagnosed early during pregnancy after 14th week, she has almost 75% chance of delivering a baby before 32nd week of gestation. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important thing because in our country we have so many preterm deliveries. Mm -hmm. And this preterm delivery, the baby is dying. So we have very high prenatal mortality because of preterm deliveries. And the most, most important thing is you must scan or screen these patients early from 14 to 18 weeks. Or if she is not high risk, then at least once during 22 to 24 weeks to see what is the length of the cervix. In low risk patient, ultrasonography does not give you any importance because it has not been found to be really important to diagnose short cervix and it doesn't have any bearing on the obstetric outcome mm -hmm. but the high risk patient yes definitely. definitely so how do we treat this incompetent os uh, now what has happened is that when a patient has high risk like preterm deliveries in the past whether she has a very short cervix less than 1.5 centimeters then they definitely benefit by tightening of internal os, whether you do it by McDonald's method or by Schrodinger's method. And there are two types of tightening of os. One is history indicated, second ultrasonography indicated and third prophylactic circlage. It has been found that sometimes twins patient where tightening of internal os is done prophylactically, they have more chance of delivering preterm. So, this surgical procedure should not be taken very lightly. It must be properly balanced depending on the patient's history. Depending on the ultrasound examination, one must decide. After all, it's a surgical exposure and we have to be very careful about unnecessary tightening of internal os. So, ultrasonography has got a very good negative predictive value. Means if the cervix is more than 2.5 cm, there is no need of any intervention. Mm -hmm. So this patient can be asked to take bed rest, limited activities. Progesterone is found to be really effective in these patients. Some of the obstetricians use tocolytics without much of a help because we, the receptors are not available till 20th week of gestation. Still tocolytics are given in our country. But if you really feel that the patient may deliver early, you can give her corticosteroids. That helps, definitely. But the tightening of OS has to be selected properly, depending on history, ultrasound examination, and whether she is a high risk or not. Absolutely. Fantastically, sir. So can we take the take-home message that the history of the patient is the most important thing, yes. followed by the transvaginal sonography yes. uh, helps us to or aids us to the right diagnosis right. and the third is the cervical circlage uh, when needed uh, when the cervical length is less than 15 millimeter right. one should not be reluctant to go for surgical procedure and do it Absolutely. just go because ahead there are and so many meta analysis and they have <coughs> found that unnecessary unindicated tightening of internal os does not give any positive Outcome. outcome as far as obstetric outcome is concerned in this patient. So we should not expose this patient to anesthesia and surgery. 
सर एज आई नो यू आर द बेस्ट इन यूर सर्जिकल टेक्निक्स यू हैव अ बेस्ट सर्जिकल हैंड सो इज देर एनी अ टिप दैट यू वुड लाइक टू गिव टू द फेलो गायनाकोलॉजिस्ट यंग गायनाकोलॉजिस्ट वाइल्ड डूइंग सर्वाइकल सर्कल आज ओके इफ यू रियली आस्क मी आइडियल मेथड इज डॉक्टर शिरोडकर अ वेरी मच इंडियन हु हैड डिवाइज दिस टाइटनिंग ऑफ इंटरनल ऑस बिकॉज इट टेक्स अ स्टिच एट द लेवल ऑफ द इंटरनल ऑस वेर द प्रॉब्लम इज बट टेक्निकली इट इज डिफिकल्ट अ जूनियर रेसिडेंट हु हैज नेवर सीन शिरोडकर सर्कलाज ऑपरेशन विल नेवर बी एबल टू परफॉर्म हिमसेल्फ और हर सेल्फ सो नाउ द इजिएस्ट मेथड इज मैकडोनाल्ड सर्वाइकल सर्कलाज वेर बाय यू टेक अ पर्स स्ट्रिंग विथ अ मसिल इन टेप एट द जंक्शन ऑफ द सर्विक्स एंड द वजाइना इन द पर्स स्ट्रिंग एंड टाई द नोट सो दैट इट बिकम्स वेरी ईजी before 38 week of gestation you can remove it around 38 week of gestation if she carries on till that period remove the stitch and allow her to deliver so but what is important is we must do ultrasound even after taking a stitch mm-hmm. to see whether now after tightening up or the length of the cervix is 2.5 cm plus or not and above the level of the stitch the cervix must be at least 1 cm otherwise these patients have more chances of having preterm delivery later on even if you are taken the cervical stitch it hardly takes few minutes to finish this operation the Does mcdonald stitch the cervical stitch needs to be supported with any medicinal line of yeah. treatment i think we do i use in my practice progesterone in injectable form and immediately after the operation if there is no bleeding or spotting we give micronized progesterone 200 mg to 300 mg and you can give either micronized progesterone or injectable progesterone 17 alpha hydroxy progesterone proluton depo 500 mg every week intramuscularly to this patient at the time of operation we cover this patient with tocolytics injectable tocolytics so that she doesn't get premature contraction of the uterus the uterus remains quiet and then depending on her history she may be put on tocolytics orally later on so that will be continued again that long? is controversial the tocolytics right. yes so that should be continued for how long uh, we we do continue for a long period around 34 weeks minimum because after that the survival rate is better in any patient who delivers but the corticosteroid should be given if you feel that even after taking the stitch patient may deliver corticosteroid should be given and i am sure now all gynecologists know the dose of corticosteroids and everybody has accept the corticosteroids especially in preterm delivery so that has to be done in these patients also fantastic thank you very much sir for sharing your views and thank you very much for your precious time to be here my pleasure thank you thank you very much